In this experiment, we're going to be using the kinetic energy produced by wind to generate mechanical and electrical energy. Before you begin, please make sure that you have all your proper PPE, including safety glasses and anything else that your instructor requires. And please remember to clean and disinfect all your equipment before and after use. By now you should have reviewed all the lab instructions, so what I'm going to do is just walk you through all the different pieces of equipment and show you the setup, and then you can go ahead and do your experiment. Right here we have our fan, that's going to be used to produce our wind. We have a base, a long rod, a rod clamp, a short rod, horizontal, on which we have our energy transfer generator mounted, which has the rotor on it. We've set up our fan 40 centimeters away from the center line of the rotor, so we try to line everything up. We have an anemometer and weather sensor, and on here there's a little turbine that you're going to place just in front of the rotor when you're measuring airspeed, and it'll give you a readout on your GLX. You will also use this to get your temperature and barometric pressure readings, again, on the GLX. You'll need to use a multimeter in order to measure the resistance across our voltage resistor here, which is also connected back to the GLX, and we're going to use that to measure the voltage once this is spinning. The other thing to keep in mind is please set yourself up so that you don't have anything on the downstream side that could cause deflection of the airflow. We don't want to create any turbulence that's going to affect your readings. We want to have nice clean airflow across the rotor for our measurements. Before you can start taking voltage readings, you need to measure the resistance across our voltage resistor. In the lab it tells you it's 100 ohms, which it is, but not every resistor is exactly the same, so we need to take an, uh, a much more exact measurement. So with your multimeter, make sure you turn it to the smallest scale on the resistance because we're only dealing with less than 100 ohms or up to 100 ohms. And try and get your best reading across the resistor. Hold it for a number of seconds until things stabilize. So in this case, I'm reading 95.5, but your results may vary. And of course, if you're doing this experiment virtually, your instructor will provide you with a resistance to use for your calculations. If you're doing this in person, please make sure to note down the reading that you have and don't use what I have here in the video. I now have the experiment running. I've let the fan run for at least 30 seconds so that we can get a nice constant airflow going on our rotor. So hopefully we'll be able to get a good reading for our airspeed. And I'm simply going to place my anemometer just in front of the rotor. And on my GLX, I can actually see the wind speed that's being recorded at this point. And, right, and what you're going to do is you're going to let it run for a little while. You're going to see the numbers go up and down a little bit. So just try and choose the most extreme examples and take the average. Or if you see it getting very steady, then you can use that number. Right now, mine is floating mostly between 1.1 and 1.3 meters per second. So I would note that as 1.2 meters per second. I can also note down my temperature and my barometric pressure at this point as well and note those in my log, but don't take the voltage reading because you're going to do that through a separate chart. If you have everything connected properly, when you power up your GLX, you should come to a screen similar to this. It might have two, it might have four, it might have eight, it might have... Uh, yeah, two, four, six, or eight different readings on it. And you can just scale from the bottom to here. So on F1, we see there's two. I can move to four different readings, three, or eight. You can choose whichever you want, but for this experiment, you probably only need four. And if any of those are not the readings you're looking for, if you just hit the little check mark, you can scroll over and change any of these values. And then you hit the check mark again. Let's say we're going to choose wind chill for this one. And now we've changed that reading to wind chill. So if you're not seeing the readings you're looking for, you can easily change them on the screen. But like I said, four should be good enough. And in this case, we're really only concerned about wind speed, temperature, and relative humidity. When we go to the voltage part of it, we're going to be using a different graph. So if everything's hooked up properly, if I move my anemometer into the wind stream, you're going to see that I'm starting to get readings for my wind speed. And it's holding actually pretty steady around between 2.3 and 2.7-ish. So this is why you're going to keep it going for a fair amount of time just so that you can get something steady and take your reading that way. Once you have those readings, you're going to need to connect your voltage sensor and make sure you're connecting it to the correct one on the side there. 
And then you're going to hit your home key to go back to the main screen and scroll down to graph. At this point, you want to see what you have on your scales because we want to measure voltage. In this case, I'm seeing wind speed. So to change that again, I just hit my check mark, hit it again to select, and I'm going to scroll down to voltage and hit my check mark. So now I know I'm recording, going to be recording voltage. Next step is I'm going to hit the play button and we're just going to sit and let this go for at least 30 seconds of recording. While it's recording, you can hit the auto scale button on F1 here and it'll, it'll blow up the screen a little bit. If, if you're seeing very small lines, you hit the auto scale and it kind of fits the screen a little bit better. And you'll see the time changing along the bottom. So once you have at least 30 seconds recorded, we're going to hit the play button again to stop it. So let's begin. So I'm recording and you're seeing that it's not jumping very high. So I'm just going to auto scale it and you'll see that it becomes a little bit easier to follow. I notice now I've passed 30 seconds on my time scale, so I'm going to hit the play button to stop. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to scroll down to statistics. And you're going to see some stuff come up along the bottom here. You're going to see a minimum, a maximum value, an average, and another value. We're only concerned about the max value. And that's what you have to note down in your notes. In this case, I'm reading 2.53, so I'm going to note down 2.53 for my lab experiment. Once you've reached this stage, the only thing that's left to do is to measure the diameter of the rotor and the rest of the experiment can be done by following the rest of the calculations. That should be all the information that you require in order to complete the experimentation part of this lab. Once you've taken all your readings, you can do your calculations and finish off the rest of the lab report. As always, if there are any further questions, please contact your instructor.